welcome back to the Student Hub Live. Well, in this session, we take a look at the E117 app. Um, and to demonstrate this, Ben Langdown is a lecturer in sports and coaching in the sport and fitness department here at the AU. And you've already met Caroline Heaney, um, who's a senior lecturer in sport and fitness. Okay, this app is really, really exciting. Um, but I wondered if you could tell us what augmented reality is before we actually start looking at what the app does, because it's one of the concepts that you're using. Yeah, so um, augmented reality is slightly different to virtual reality. So most people have probably seen the goggles that you put yeah. on and you go inside a world. Um, augmented reality is a mixture between virtual reality and the real world. Um, so it's, uh, we're going to demonstrate in a minute, hopefully, with um, our anatomy models, how it's that mixture between the table that we've got in front of us yeah. and the anatomy models. So it's very innovative. Um, how do students get this app then? Do they download it? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of links to download it. Um, you can go to the app stores as well um, through your mobile device. Yeah. Just download the E117 app. And if you're yeah. not studying E117, if you've yeah. already studied your level one modules, can you still access this? Yeah, anybody can access it. Yeah. Um, what you'll need to do if you're not studying E117 is just to print off the trigger image. Brilliant. Um, so E117 students will have been given one of the trigger images on this coaster. Great. Um, but anybody can ac um, access the app and print off the image. Okay, excellent. All right. So if you haven't done that, we'll put the links in the chat uh, for you to find that app um, on uh, whatever store your phone uh, supports. Okay, so we're going to look at the muscular system and the digestive system app. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what are some of the key features of this? So it's probably a good idea if I show you. Yeah. Um, so we'll start off with, we've got the trigger image on the table. Um, the largest iPad that we could find. <laughs> Can we just show people the trigger image as well, yeah, Ben? So before? I'll, I'll hold it up. Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah. So everyone studying E117 will we'll get one of these as part of their module materials. And as Ben said, if you don't have one, you can print one off. And there's a link within the app. Great. And you can get it on our blog as well. OK. okay so oh, wow. We'll try and um, bring this little model up. So you can see now that the, the muscular system has appeared on the screen. And with this, okay. we can rotate him around, we can zoom in, we can move him up and down, and um, then we can start to have a look a little bit deeper. So we can bring up some pins. So one of the key features here is that we want you to be able to identify the muscles, yeah. identify the actions of the muscles and the locations. Um, so if we tap on a pin, we can see so the pecs here, we've got the actions um, and the obviously the position and we can turn them around and have a look at the, the pins on the back Amazing. as well. Pretty mind blowing, isn't it? It's incredible. The, the thing is, you know, often I think in particular when studying biology and physiology, um, it can be really hard to read things in books and then you sort of try and map things onto different things because you might be looking at different levels of detail. Yeah. So this 3D idea is incredible to be able to sort of consolidate some of that learning and be able to actually apply it physically um, in a different way. Yeah, and I think back when I learnt stuff like this, it was all in, yeah. it was all on paper, it's two dimensional, and this really brings it to life and makes it much more real. Yeah, they love the app in the chat. Yeah, I used to have to cut and paste things and stick them onto a wall and things to try and sort of make sense of it. Yeah. But this is a, a unique thing. Excellent. So what else can it do? So um, we've not only got the muscular system, we've also got the digestive system on here as well. So we've got this see-through body. You can see the passage that the food takes all the way down through. Um, and again, some of these pins that you can click on and start to look at the, the functions of the the different organs within the, um, the system. If we go back to the muscular system, um, so once people have had a look round, um, started to look at the actions that the, the muscles can, can do, you can then test yourself on the um, location of the muscles. So this is a, a really good way to test understanding. Yeah, yeah, so just to check, do I actually understand where the muscles are, what the names are? Um, and it takes you through, you get, um, I mean, we can have a little play if we want. Um, so it goes in, it highlights a muscle for you. You've got a load of options and you get three attempts to get each one right. Um, so we click on the, the different names and then it takes you through um, different parts of the body to check Fantastic. your understanding. 
So this is clearly more fun than just having something um, in terms of 3D because we, we've seen these sorts of things, but you've mentioned that the sort of augmented reality is this merging between the virtual reality and, and being online. And, and anyone can get any of these trigger images. What makes this quite different then in terms of why you're using a trigger image and then why you're using the iPad? Is it, is it just more fun or is there some sort of other benefit that you get from using this distinction, I guess, between the virtual reality um, and other forms of media? Yeah, definitely. There's, um, there's a lot of research coming out, um, especially over the sort of last five years, that shows that students are more engaged with the augmented reality compared to paper-based yeah. um, tasks. So you'll be able to learn more, you'll be able to learn quicker, yeah. because you're immersed into this augmented reality world, if you like. Yeah. Um, so there's not just the augmented reality on here. So sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. You kind of need three hands to work everything. So you can just go into here and use the, if I just pick this up again, go back into here and use the desktop mode. So this becomes a little bit more user friendly um, when you're actually trying to get into some of the real detail um, or if you forget your trigger image. So we can now just look at this and, oh, he's gone upside also down. Also, any students that don't have a smartphone or a tablet, yeah. they can use the desktop version. Brilliant. So, so there is a desktop version out. available. Yeah. And what was this activity tracker on here as well? Okay, so the activity tracker, all E117 students have been sent out one of these. Brilliant. So that you can monitor what they're doing. Um, some students have been saying in the chat that um, because the brain requires so much fuel to think, is it just as valid um, not to do any exercise because they're burning calories <laughs> while nice they're try. studying really hard? Yeah, great try. Um, so, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So they've been sent these activity trackers. Yeah, so this will monitor um, the amount of steps that people are doing, so the, the user. Yeah. Um, it then calculates how many calories have been burnt, it yeah. calculates um, how much distance has been covered, and also the activity duration as well. So, um, great piece of kit in terms of tracking activity levels, but also with the website that's been built, um, we've allowed students to be able to compare their data. Oh, brilliant. So, we can... Um, well, that takes interacting with your tutor group to a whole different level. You yes. Can the whole module, wow. not just a tutor group. So, we can show you on here, um, this is some data I collected earlier. Yeah. Um, Ben's been very busy running up and down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> You've put it on the dog, haven't you? <laughs> I know, I do it too. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the dashboard page that when you sign into the site, um, students will see. Um, so currently my daily steps is zero, which means I haven't synced my device. Um, so once my device is synced, that data will pull through. Um, and it gives my data on here, sorry, Carol. Okay. Um, and then we can go into some comparisons as well. So if I, let me just put in some start dates so we see some more data. So that's from the 1st of September, some of the data that has pulled through from my activity. Um, there are a couple of blanks in there. Sometimes the data does take a little while to pull through. So students shouldn't be concerned by that. It will actually come through eventually. But the, the nice thing here is that the user can start comparing themselves to the rest of the module. Um, so they can see other... Oh, it gets competitive, and I bet with your <laughs> lot as well, yeah. it would be fiercely competitive. Exactly. Sports students love um, a bit oh, of competition. Yes. Um, so not only the whole module, but we've also got male versus female. Okay. And can you tell if you do strap it onto your dog instead of going for a <laughs> Depends if the uh, the dog is very active and it suddenly <laughs> shoots right up. Um, you might spot some, uh, some non outliers. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. And then the final one we've got on here is the age categories as well. So um, that will pull through. And down at the bottom, you can actually see the sort of total number of steps for the date range that has been achieved by. Now, each is of this those all categories. just about setting up competition, or is there a, a learning point here as well? Yeah, there's definitely a learning point. So um, throughout the module. Um, there's lots of activities that refer back to this. Um, so looking at do um, the student population on this module um, compare to the guidelines that have been set out there in terms of the amount of minutes that people should be doing right. over a week.
So we need to remind students to use their trackers if they're on this module because this data is going to be a source of, of evidence really for them to make comparisons yeah. with other sources um, as part of their learning journeys and they can uh, compare things in their, in their spare time if they're feeling competitive and, and look at how they are against the rest of the group. What we want is students to wear their trackers from now, they don't yeah. have to wait to start the module, wear yeah. the trackers, wear them as much as possible so Brilliant. we get some real accurate data. And what if they've got here. any problems with this, what do they do? Um, we've got a blog page that it, students that study in E117 will find a link to in their uh, module guide, mm -hmm. which kind of troubleshoots some problems. There's a video on there to help you set it up. Brilliant. We're also using the Welcome Forum. There's quite a few students have been posted on there where they've been having difficulties, and we've had a few people had a few teething problems, um, but some, those are gradually starting to get sorted out. Brilliant. Excellent. So there's well, help out there. Thank you very much for that demonstration. It looks fantastic um, and, and really fun, I think, as well. So uh, I'm sure that the students will really enjoy that uh, on E117. OK, so um, Ben and Caroline, thank you very much. Caroline, you're going to stick with us I for am. our next yeah, session. Um, yes, indeed. But we will show you a little video in the meantime. We're going to take a look at uh, Ricky Skine and I'll be back in a few minutes um, with Caroline. And um, uh, we will be talking with Jess as well about um, the importance of the student perspective in all of this. So join us in a few minutes for that.